So what does full time mean for us? It means we wake up, we work, we sleep, we eat, go to bed seven days a week inside our motor home. For me, it works out pretty well because we can camp and stay close enough to where I work in town. So I'm kind of liking this. We were introduced to a concept um, called slow travel. Right. It's someone else's word, but it really explains exactly what we hope to do. We were global travelers before, and I wished I could say we have visited more places on the planet, but mm -hmm. it was our dream to just get in a backpack. We talked about it a lot. Like, let's get in, let's go over there to uh, Thailand and Europe and just see everything and ride the trains. And it sounded so romantic. Um, and we actually had plans to go into South America for the first time in 2020, which obviously didn't happen. We changed our mind and we went on a road trip. And that was pretty exciting actually. It was. You know, we got a new car went for a road trip just uh, due to the pandemic. We had to make quick changes in our plans and go here and go there. And actually it kind of, we kind of caught the bug. A little bit. And uh, now uh, here we are living Let's, in an RV. I think that road trip really helped us become more intimate with the areas that we were going to. You know, it's when you catch the creepy roadside attraction. You know, I, I've always wanted to be a gypsy, but frankly, we never really were interested in RV travel until last fall. So uh, once we started to think about it, it really, it's like all the pieces lined up, all of our desires to travel, all of the, I think, this is just a way for us to get exposed to different parts of the United States that we never even thought we we may never see. So guys, one of the cool things about being uh, full-time in our RV that we're discovering is we have a great view, okay, every day. And the cool, even cooler than that is on the weekends, we have a different view. We're gonna, we're traveling all over Oregon. We're seeing really cool things and we're actually exposing ourselves to areas of Oregon that even though we've lived here for over 25 years, we've never seen. So this is really cool and everything. But when we say full time, you know, we're still coming back to the same place every week. And, you know, the reason why we're doing that is because we don't know what the hell we're doing. All right. We aren't like casual RVers that decided to go full time. We've only like used RVs maybe twice in our entire marriage, you know, and that's for like going to Burning Man or going to a rock festival. Another great thing about being here, starting here, learning here is because the place that we bought our RV is here and we can go there and we can like ask questions, maybe learn like, for example, the drop down bed over the uh, driving area tilted and got stuck. And we thought we were gonna have to pay to have something fixed. And really it was just an adjustment that probably most uh, full-time RVers know how to fix like that. Not us, we panicked, freaked out, had to make an appointment, wait to get in. And so that's a great thing. You know, I learned if you put ice in the black tank, it cleans your sensors. I also didn't know that you put happy camper in the gray tank. Okay, we had no idea. I thought that was just septic. So, you know, having these professionals be able to talk to us and really kind of guide us has been a godsend. Upon moving in, you know, being in an RV, we have so much space and so much stuff. You know, and every place has to have its place to go. Everything has to have yeah. its spot. If it doesn't have its spot, it's gotta go, you know, because. Yeah limited space. And Paul's done a really, really good job in over the years, really learning how to kind of define 
a home for everything in our house. So I'm really, really grateful that he's here. He's very organized that way. I think that's my military background. Yeah, I'm sure. You it's know, true. everything's got to have its place. It's got to fit. It's got to do its thing. If it were up to me, everything would be color coded. Right. <laughs> Why yeah. is the spatula <laughs> with, with the garden hose? Because they're both green. You know, I guess the problem with that is, <laughs> is, you know, Amy's got several shades of green. <laughs> Or several shades uh, of that's blue. That's the teal drawer. I have green and blue and red. And it, so she'll be, though. no, that's mauve. Or that's nutmeg. Oh, and I'm like... Nutmeg is a specific color, okay? It's specific. And for those of you watching, like you brown? know what I'm saying. No. Nutmeg has <laughs> some orange in it. It's definitely a warmer tone. Okay. Brown can come and blue... Blue tones. We could go yeah, see, on. See, for yeah, hours. let's let's not get her on this topic <laughs> at all. Anyway, I think that's the point. Everything needs a place, but you know what? It used to be a first aid drawer for us. I mean, bot. Maybe you have a picture. You can insert how big those containers were that we use for first aid products, and now we have like this much first aid space. Oh yeah, oh yeah. We used to have massive space. For certain items mm -hmm. and now we have limited space right. for those same items so hence the downsizing right the minimalizing but i'll say you know when you minimalize your life is so yeah. much less stress there's so much stuff less so much less to worry about yeah that right? is so true i think those things we thought we needed especially when we first started this process um was it was so empowering to just get rid of the like heavy weight of things they owned me you know even this last transition into the motorhome probably one of the most powerful moments i'm still gonna I'm emotional but i put like four pairs of shoes five pairs of shoes into the motorhome and every other pair of shoes i went went away um if it were up to her <laughs> all these cupboards would have shoes purse. or purses yeah, yeah. or shoes and purses but to her defense if it were up to me i'd have a whole closet of hats he so would. he would he has a lot of hats but you know we were able to keep most of those for you just by creatively storing them differently um each one in the past had like its own little vault <laughs> Individually <laughs> cubbied. Yeah. They were, they were so special. We had a lot of room in our last place. So it was like we were totally spread out. We loved it. It's one of the reasons, though, that we stayed there when we did. Um, and I knew, you know, coming in here that we would, we'd have to let some things go. So it hasn't, it hasn't been terrible. Mm -hmm. Anyone that's watching this video that's had to downsize can totally relate. And so, I would say what I miss most about downsizing was the extra space between things. I don't know what you miss. You can put it in the comments below, but if that makes sense, like I liked having a row of space between my glassware in the cupboard. And now I intentionally pack it in. So when we're rolling down the street, stuff's not falling over. And that, that is, that's hard for me to get used to because I like air around things. So, um, downsizing is more than just less stuff. It's all also just about getting used to your space being different just yeah. having different you should see the inside of our bathroom cabinets it's like be careful they're loaded like a jacket i can't tell you box. how many times we've gotten back from a trip and i've opened the door and it's just a, a, a waterfall <laughs> of medication bottles or lotion bottles oh or but you know what you can't just have one and there's such little stuff it's like oh i can hang on to this it's so tiny so i think we'll have some i think we'll have some more purging i, I everyone i watch on youtube will say you know we we purged more we purged more so we'll expect that the only thing i don't expect to get rid of is his fishing gear oh no i have a whole cubby <laughs> dedicated he has like the whole basement gear. of our a class and you guys are going to see it too i'm going to do a lot of filming <laughs> well of me. we'll have to do a video where we walk through and show how we've used our space that'll be a, that'll be coming up so if you subscribe to our channel you'll get to see that and there is it is impressive he's done a great job he's done a great job i'll say it was all him though because if it were up to me i would just like don't open that cover <laughs> it's okay i'm the creative one in the family right <laughs> Yes. I'm like, mm, does it fit? Yeah, okay. So one great benefit of coming to Oregon and going to state parks 
is if you're a disabled veteran, there's a lot of benefits for you for free camping. And it, you know, I'm pro I think Amy's probably gonna do a video at some point touching down on, on that because there's so many different uh, campgrounds and county benefits. And believe it or not, guys, if you don't live in Oregon, it doesn't matter. Right. Okay. They honor disabled veterans from anywhere. Yeah. You don't have a, there's no residency requirement. No. So this is kind of like, you know, you get 10 days of camping for free at state parks in Oregon. I like a lot of state parks. You got to be proactive and schedule ahead. But honestly, sure. a lot of them are open 365 days a year. So We've been able to secure reservations pretty easy at some of the um, parks in our area. The ones that are a little harder to get into are on the coast, but not they're not. It's not that bad. Being a good boy, yes, he's being a good boy, except when. <laughs> so we are gonna do a lot of Norman videos. What's up, Norman? He's so cute. His teeth are so sharp. Ouch. Okay, I'm trying to be cool through that. Now, um, something else we're going to talk to you guys about is sort of the area that we're in here locally. Paul mentioned that we really enjoy um, staying at this RV park. Um, and there's some, kind of some cool stuff around here. I'm going to surprise And actually, you. there's one really cool thing about it that I'm going to touch on another video. Yeah. And you're definitely going to want yeah. to check that out. Well, especially if you're older like us. <laughs> Okay, and then of course we're gonna do a ton of Norman videos. People like this cat. I think we should have just started a cat YouTube channel, and uh, but we'll make sure to put him in here. What did Norman do today? Oh, Norman's learning how to take a walk on a leash. Yeah, he is. Why are you biting me? You're so naughty. He's probably mad at me because I woke him up from his nap. Like time to get in front of the camera. <laughs> He's so silly. Anyway, thanks for joining us. We really, really excited about next steps. And a lot of more of our videos, guys, are going to be a little more adventure videos. Yeah. We're going to do a lot of outdoor <gasps> stuff. Oh, that's right. We did um, some shopping today. <laughs> yeah. Can't wait yeah, to see that. You know, so uh, stay tuned, subscribe, give us a thumbs up, and uh, maybe, you know, hit the notifications so that you can know when we release new videos. We're gonna to try to do this as often as possible so that you can follow our adventures. That's right. Thank you.